Hello everyone, so today I'm going to be doing another reading vlog. This time I have a bunch of new releases I want to talk about. Some of them are series I know I really enjoy. Others are series I've been trying out and I'm going to read at least one more volume to see if I'm going to continue picking it up. But real quick, I'll talk about these ones. These are not all the manga volumes I will be talking about in this video, but they are the ones that are highest on the list, I suppose. We have Medalist Volume 2, bunch of volume twos. We have Auto volume two, Gachiakata volume two, March Comes In Like a Lion volume two, Blood on the Tracks volume 16, The Summer Car Died volume three, and My Girlfriend's Child volume four, and I have a couple ideas for some other volumes I would like to read in this video as well. So yeah, once I've read a few of these volumes, I will come back with an update. Okay, I'm back and I have read some volumes, three so far. First, I wanna talk about Blood on the Tracks. This is the penultimate volume, so just one more after this. And I continue to just be so impressed with this series, especially this time skip section that Shuzo Oshimi has decided to do. I really feel like this part of the story has been amazing and just devastating. And obviously there are many series that deal with like really traumatic things happening to characters. And obviously some of those will also explore the consequences of those traumatic events, but I don't think I've read very many series that tackle it as in depth as Shuzu Oshimi has decided to do in Blood on the Tracks. He has other series as well, like Flowers of Evil I can think has a pretty extended epilogue section, but it's still not as long as this in Blood on the Tracks. I can't think of very many other authors who can just draw a character having one expression and it will just hit me so strongly the emotion that the character's feeling. Plus the body horror in here adds a whole nother element. We really feel how Seiichi is feeling with his complicated relationship with his mother. I really love how suspenseful the first part of this manga was, but this second epilogue section is just something else just really exploring the emotions of all these characters and just how life moves on and you still have to deal with the trauma that you have. And I don't know, this is just something really great. This is why I will read pretty much anything Shuzo Oshimi releases because it's always interesting and I love the art and the body horror and the emotions and stuff. So hopefully that made sense, but I'm loving the series and I can't wait to see how it wraps up in volume 17. Next, I have something very different. I have Witch Hat Atelier Kitchen volume three. Now, I know there's nothing spectacular about the series. It doesn't even compare to the regular Witch Hat Atelier series. It's very different in tone for the most part. I've seen lots of people give these volumes three stars. I totally understand that, but honestly, this is just a really nice read. Obviously, I'm not a huge Slice of Life fan. The kitchen, like the actual cooking parts in here are whatever, but just seeing this nice little wizard family live together, make dinner for each other, I don't know, it's just really nice. I feel like if you really, really love the characters in the series, then you'll really, really enjoy the spin-off series. But there's really nothing groundbreaking happening here. It's pretty much entirely fluff, but I really enjoy the spin-off volumes. They're a nice palette cleanser from the very dark, depressing other things I like to read. So this was just another nice volume and another very different series. We have The Summer Hikaru Died Volume 3. This cover makes it look very nice and happy. Little did you know, this is definitely a horror manga. Look at, look at that. I love this. I love that Yam Press decided to do that. So I feel like so far this series has really been about Yoshiki, the best friend of Hikaru, who is the Hikaru who died and was replaced by something that isn't Hikaru. But I really feel like it's been about Yoshiki kind of dealing with his complicated thoughts about his friend who he knows is gone, but is still there to everybody else. And he really doesn't know how to grieve, how to deal with this, how to deal with the feelings that he has for his friend. So I feel like the first two volumes have been about that. This volume has been turning and more about Hikaru or Hikaru and what he wants to do, how he's trying to fit in, even though he's some kind of spirit monster thing. These two boys are definitely struggling with this and there's still a buildup and tension between them. So all of that is very interesting, but then in the background, 
There's also this building suspense with the village or the villagers. They know something is different. Something is going on in the forest. They aren't sure what, but they're trying to figure it out. Some of the other high schoolers are maybe realizing that Hikaru is not quite Hikaru anymore. I love all the different ways that spirits are represented, whether we have this strange, I don't even know how to describe this looking thing. We have spirits that are represented with sounds. Those are really cool. This is just exactly what I want in a horror manga. It's not just like jump scares and gore, but there is plenty of body horror. It is creepy, uh, but there's also plenty of emotions being explored with our characters. So this is one I definitely agree with the hype for. I just really, really love this series. It's only three volumes, but I'm having a fantastic time. I'm really looking forward to volume four whenever we get that. I know that it has been released in Japan. I really like the cover and I don't know. I just can't wait for more of this. So that's everything I have to talk about so far. When I've read something else, I will be back with you with another update. All right, I'm back and I've read a few more things. I'm going to start with My Girlfriend's Child volume four. I feel like this is another great volume. This one might get a little bit into the melodrama for some people, especially for a series that is so realistic and well-researched, but I really enjoyed it. Sachi, our main character here, is really struggling to find a support system, whether it's a failure on her family's part or the school that she's going to with her situation, or even just her own feelings about who she can rely on and how much of her own issues she can put on them, if that makes sense. She really tends to isolate herself, and that's definitely something that she's dealing with a lot in this volume. So I think this manga so far is a pretty great educational resource, and that's obviously what it's trying to do, but I really appreciate that it also has an interesting story. I feel like this could very easily become just kind of textbook-y, but the fact that the characters are so interesting. And there are some conflicts that might seem a little bit exaggerated, but I don't find any of it like out of the realm of possibility for real life. So I'm definitely enjoying this series. It's for sure one of the most unique stories in my collection in terms of subject matter. So definitely one I will be continuing to read. On the other hand, one I will definitely not be continuing to read anymore is March Comes In Like a Lion Volume 2. This is more of the same from the first volume. This is just a combination of everything I don't like in a manga volume. Main characters who don't like themselves even though they have many people around them who are trying to help them. Yes, not all the people around them are trying to help them, but this guy, he has people who want to be his friends and he could rely on them and he just chooses not to. I don't think he's a badly written character, I just don't like to read those characters. My biggest issue with this manga so far though is just how busy it is. Like if you flip to a page like this, what is even going on here? There's just so much stuff going on on that page. So many different like speech bubbles and then little tiny jokes and sound effects and it's just all way too much to read. If I wanted to read a novel, I would go read a novel. I wouldn't try to pick up a manga. It also tried to be funny and I didn't find any of the comedy made me laugh at all. So didn't like that either. Finally, this is said to be a sports manga, but I just don't like this sports manga format at all. There's not enough of the actual tournaments and the competitions. It's mostly just drama and the main character being sad, which again, is not a flaw in the series. It's just not what I want to read. I feel like I need to go reread Hikaru no Go for the actual like sports manga that I want. I do like the other shogi player that our main character Ray does not want to acknowledge as a friend, but who kind of forces himself in his life anyway. I do like that character and some of the cat panels are funny. I like when the cats are in the background and they have their own speech bubbles and they're making jokes. That part's funny, but I really, really had to force myself to finish this second volume. So I'm done with the series. Unfortunately, it's just not for me. I had a feeling after I read the first volume that I wasn't going to love this series and I was right. So this one I will add to my ever growing unhaul pile. Next, I read Steel of the Celestial Shadows volume two. The best thing about this manga is the cover. 
but I don't think I'm as impressed with this manga as many other people are. I know the first volume got lots of very positive reviews. I thought it was good, but not anything amazing. And this volume is more of the same. We're introduced to some new characters who are okay. I think it's kind of strange how often the main character's wife is compared to his mother, like many, many times. And they even look similar. And I don't know if there's something like narratively going on there but it happens a lot and it's getting kind of weird but yeah i don't know i think i'll give this one more volume to decide if i'm going to continue reading but so far it's not my new favorite thing it's fine but i might not be collecting it anymore all right that was it for this update i will be back when i have something else to talk about okay so this will probably be my last update for this video but i have four more final volumes to talk about the first one is Don't Call It Mystery, Omnibus 4, Volume 7 and 8. So this volume was pretty good. Not my favorite in the series, probably my least favorite so far. But I'm still having a really fun time with this. Our main character, Totono, is such a interesting, empathetic character. He's very unique. I don't think I've ever read a character quite like him before, especially in manga. And we get a few more hints at his backstory in this volume, which is nice because I feel like that's an element that has been missing so far in this series. There's also a few more crumbs about the Zodiac mystery, which is kind of the overarching mystery in this episodic series. I just felt like the mysteries in this volume were not quite as intriguing as in previous volumes, but I'm still very much enjoying my time with the series. Speaking of enjoying my time, the next volume I read was Auto Volume 2. This might have been the best volume I read for this video. It has been a very, very long time since I read an action series that had me so invested so soon. The art is so crisp and easy to follow. The stakes are super high, which I prefer in an action series and most series in general. The plant powers are cool and I really like how they contradict this sci-fi kind of futuristic setting. And I can't wait to read more of this. I really want to wait until more volumes are out and then binge read it as I prefer to do, especially with action series, but I don't know if I have the patience to do that. This series also really makes me want to reread Akira, which I haven't done in a while. I've never reread it. I've read it, but it was a while ago. I was a little bit worried since it has been about two months or so since I read the first volume, but the first couple chapters in here immediately pulled me right back into the story. And I was just as invested now as I was when I finished volume one. So that's great. I do think if you don't really enjoy action heavy series, you might not enjoy this one because it is a lot of just action. There's a little bit in the middle that's not action, but it's quite a lot of action. We get introduced to some more characters, some more people with different motives, many of whom are after our main character who is on the run, and I'm just having a fantastic time with this series. Really glad I saw that volume one at the store and decided to pick it up on a whim because uh, it has not disappointed so far. Next, I read another volume two and that was Gachiakata volume two. So this one is definitely action heavy like Otto, but unfortunately I am just not nearly as invested in these characters in this storyline as I was with Otto, which is not really fair to compare them. They're different series but this one just is not as intriguing to me. It has lost a lot of the initial intrigue from volume one. Now we're really into the cleaning service. If you've read this, you know what I'm talking about. There's some cool character designs in this volume, but that's basically my only positives for it. It was fine to read, but I was just reading it just to finish the volume really. I know my library is picking this up digitally, so if I want to continue, I can go ahead and do that or read it on the Kmonga app, but this is when I've decided I'm not going to collect physically anymore. And the final volume I read for this video was Medalist Volume 2. So I continue to believe that the strongest part of this series so far is the humor. I laughed out loud several times while reading this volume. In fact, I laughed out loud several times reading the first volume as well. So the humor so far is really great for me. I like that our main character's mother is finally realizing how she has messed up, how she has failed to support her daughter. It is trying to do better at that. Although I don't really empathize with her as much as the author is maybe trying to get me to so far. So interestingly, everything outside of the competitions so far, like the characters and their interactions and the rivals and stuff like that, all of those moments when I'm reading those, it's great. However, this reminds me a lot of One Dance in that when we get to the actual competitions, I'm not as interested, 
which is the complete opposite of any other sports manga usually for me anyway but because this is based on like an individual sport I think that's my issue like the actual ice performances in here my eyes kind of glaze over and it was the same thing with one dance unfortunately but I am still enjoying this and I do think I could be more invested in the competition part once we learn more about the new characters and the rivals and stuff once it feels like the stakes are higher probably but yes, I'm still enjoying the series. I'm still planning on collecting it and I will continue to read it volume by volume until I make the final decision whether it will stay in my collection or not. All right, so those are the 10 volumes I read for this video. If you've read any of these series and you have thoughts on them, whether they're positive or negative, please leave those comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. But that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.